Now. Literacy for the 21st Century Student Dr. Miles Harvey University of New Mexico, United States of America Dr. Rick Marlatt New Mexico State University, United States of America Introduction The field of literacy studies has made many educators take a deeper look into the similarities and differences between print and digital texts Coiro, Noble, Langshire, and Lehu, 2009. It seems not only through literature, but also by observation as a classroom practitioner, that there are certain elements and conflicts between digital texts and print-based texts that need to be combed through by educators and scholars in the field, KIST, 2005. So, what does the field need to know about this new generation of literacy, and perhaps more importantly, how can recognizing the similarities and differences between print and digital texts improve the way students learn to read and write in the K-12 classroom? It begins by looking at the current scene of literacy studies and its relation to the current educational practices of teachers today. Current conditions of literacy studies have become inundated with new literacies, and because of it, G. 2001, suggests, that if someone wants to know about the development of literacy, he or she should not ask how literacy and language develop. Rather, he or she should ask how a specific socio-cultural practice, or related set of them, embedded in specific ways with printed words develops, p.31. For the purpose of this chapter and discussion, a focus will be on controversy in the juxtapositions given between digital and traditional, print-based texts. This, after all, is the study of new literacy, and to some, newness is often met with distrust and avoided. Baker, 2010. This chapter will discuss print and media-based approaches to getting students literate for a new age of literacy. It appears to millennials that a well-balanced literary diet contains both print and digital texts, Gerber, Abrams, Anwuegbuzi, and Bench, 2014. This means students should sample different ways of making sense of the world through multiple operations in the classroom. Later, suggestions are made for incorporating into educational settings many of the new literacy students are using away from school. New literacies are inspiring refreshing changes in their wake, not in small increments, but across the educational landscape at large. As the field of new literacies continues to grow, so too does the need for researchers to zoom in and examine what brought education to its steepest literacy precipice yet. It is in this world that national reports find a literacy crisis and that non-standard literacies and language forms are regarded as deficits rather than differences, D'Agostino and Caravaggio, 1994, P.4. With education companies like Pearson and McGraw-Hill shifting literary paradigms and moving content into digital formats, it means big changes for education. NG, 2012, discusses how digital technology tools are advancing and proliferating the marketplace at an increasing pace, p.28. The relationships between digital texts and print literacy are affected by socio-cultural components like politics, big business, privilege, oppression, and many others, g. 2017. However, for many educators their questions about how to tackle these literary issues find answers beyond a classroom, Harvey, 2018. Educators, who, considering all social components, must ask themselves, what will be the most effective literacy learning approach for the students? What does the data say about the students' reading and writing habits, and what do they need from their teacher? It is easy to get lost in the questions, and literature on the subject often falls short of good examples of what quality print and digital texts look like in K-12 classrooms across the United States, Marlatt, 2019. 
Changes in the way we make meaning in the world through literacy have not always been easy to recognize, but one only needs to observe a classroom and watch students learn for a day, Harvey, 2016. Take some time to look at the pieces of text they are reading and writing. How are they using digital texts and print literacy, or how are they not using them? Watch the students make meaning from their literary experiences. Then, ask yourself if those students are reading and writing the appropriate texts that will help them prepare for the real world, the outside world, their world, or even the next grade level. Are the literacies being used old, current, innovative, or a mix? Kajder, 2010, says, Research shows that out-of-school literacies play a very important role in literacy learning, and teachers can draw on these skills to foster learning in school, p.x. However, digital texts in particular need to be better integrated into the average classroom to foster such out-of-school connections to the students' literate and culturally unique lives, Von Gillern, 2016. Print literacy plays a role in this, but with the increase in the use of digital media, especially among children and adolescents, there is good reason to start paying closer attention to digital texts. Educators must scan their own classroom and cultural environments to see how much print and digital text is necessary for their students, Marlat, 2018. There is no one perfect formula for literacy learning, it depends on many factors, but considering the use of both print-based texts and multimedia-based texts is a great place to start when designing a curriculum for any subject and grade level. Objectives for Chapter The objectives of this literature review and discussion are to compare and contrast the important elements of digital texts to print-based texts, as it pertains to teaching K-12 students. The purpose of this literature review is to inform educators how to transition their classroom to a more culturally responsive effort towards improving literacy education for their students. Culturally specific institutions such as schools, homes, and libraries systematically structure the interactions that occur among people or between people and cultural artifacts such as books or computers. One cannot develop a viable socio-cultural conception of human development without looking carefully at the way these institutions develop, the way they are linked with one another, and the way human social life is organized within them, Foreman, Minnick, and Stone, 1997, P.6. It is from these social connections to the world that teachers must understand cultural frameworks from which we operate, and everyone, including students and teachers, should consider how these frameworks can be challenged or changed by others to benefit learners, Fang, Fu, and Lam 1999. Print and digital texts both relate to unique socio-cultural groups, themes, and skills that set them apart from one another, G, 2012. To be literate in the 21st century, one must acquire a wide variety of literary skills in both print and digital domains, which will be discussed in detail later in this review. If students do not acquire these necessary skills, they are at risk for becoming illiterate in the social world that demands both the ability to read and write across platforms, Howell, 2017. The term illiterate suggests that persons belonging to the class it designates are deviants, defined by something they lack, namely the ability to communicate. Moreover, in high technology cultures, which, more and more, are setting the style for social domains SS across the word, since literacy is regarded as so unquestionably normative, the deviancy of illiterates tends to be thought of as a lack of simple mechanical skill, on, 1986, p.190. The fact of the matter is, to be literate requires the human mind to call upon a complex network of learned skills, many in which are not innate to our being. This means the reader and writer must not only draw upon their oral language skills, but also the rules made by technologies like written text itself. 
When it comes to print illiteracy, school entities have been addressing it for hundreds of years. The neglect towards the digital needs of students is a relatively new concern in the history of education. The reality is, if educators were positioned in a variety of classrooms at random in the United States in 2019, they would see a mix of print and media literacies, at a range of grade levels, being used in a wide variety of methods, in a wide variety of socio-cultural contexts. According to Christenbury, Bomer, and Smigorinsky, 2011, there is no substantial model or continuum for teaching digital texts like there is for print literacy development. However, Kinzer and Verhoeven, 2008, describe how educational settings are changing, and more research is being done in the field to learn more about such frameworks. The work of Shute and Towell, 2003, lays the basic groundwork as they describe a three-component based model for technologically enhanced literacy learning environments, however, more work in the field is needed, especially in classroom spaces, to better understand how to teach print and digital texts in more effective ways, Don Hauser, Stutzman, and Hershey, 2018. So, why does it matter that we recognize the similarities and differences of both literacies? The answer is simple, the more we know about the world of print and digital texts, the better we can teach students of all ages how to read and write better than ever before. Breaking down literacy, then and now. The inclusion criteria for literary evidence found in this review focused on scholarly peer-reviewed articles, informative texts, practitioner guides, blogs, YouTube videos, and popular video games. A variety of digital texts were reviewed in order to collect a wide scope of reference. The methodology for this literature review involved breaking up literacy learning into nine elements, which are Defining both print and digital texts Understanding the social construction of print and digital texts Seeing print and digital texts as technological tools. Understanding the evolution of print and digital texts. Juxtaposing the interactivity of print and digital texts. Recognizing multimodalities of print and digital texts. Acquiring print and digital texts. Building print and digital text skills. Understanding popularity and demographics of users of print and digital texts. These nine elements were formed from the interpretation of three popular theoretical frameworks used when discussing education and learning. First, the structuralist model was used to explain the social structures found in both print and digital texts in and out of the classroom, color, 2008. Second, the constructivist theory helped to assimilate the varying ideas about how social and cognitive aspects of the meaning-making process relate to acquiring a language, contextualizing, interacting, and problem-solving using print and digital texts, Page and Painter, 2018. Third, the transactional theory of reading and writing was applied to better recognize the similarities and differences between the transactions of thought that occur while readers use print and digital texts. Rosenblatt, 1988. Definitions of print and digital texts. Print literacy may still be the most widely used form of literacy found in schools in the United States but digital texts are expected to continue to rise in popularity and prevalence. Print literacy has evolved over the last 5,000 years, and much like digital texts, it has a seemingly long life ahead of itself as more content becomes digitized, Myhalides, 2014. It is still believed by many, like Purcell Gates, 2001 who defend the idea that children who enter schooling with a greater exposure and knowledge of print literacy, are more successful in school. This may be due to the emphasis placed on written language in schools. What if schools acquired a new emphasis on print and digital texts in their classroom? The continuum of literacy has evolved, 
and print literacy has done its job in helping readers and writers expand their ideas and uses of language into new realms. Only then does the technology come into its own, no longer imitating the previous forms given to us by the earlier communication technology, but creating new forms and new possibilities for communication, Barron, 1999, p.1. Researchers like Glister, 1997, have taken the stance that using and understanding digital texts should not be seen as a technical skill, but rather, as the ability to understand and use information in multiple formats from a wide range of sources when it is presented by a computer's, p.1. Lancashire and Noble, 2008, agree the most immediate and obvious facts about the use of digital texts is that there are many of them, and that they are all different in what they can offer their readers and players. Print and digital texts are defined in various ways, but it is the use of these definitions in action that affect the construction of what literacy learning looks like in the classroom. It is the job of our students to define literary needs, and it is the role of educators to implement those definitions into the learning spaces of those students. Constructing meaning with print and digital texts. One popular arena in the social sciences for us to look at the similarities and differences between print and digital texts is constructivism. The constructivist theory is one perspective, one lens through which we can see the world, Willis, 1995, p16. Constructivism is a popular theoretical framework that many educators use to assimilate their varying ideas about how social and cognitive aspects of the meaning-making process relate to acquiring a language, contextualizing, interacting, and problem-solving, Boskert, 2017. These aspects all play a role in the literate lives of students in and out of school. In regards to print and digital texts, the question is, how does social constructivism play a role in the literary learning of K-12 students? Both print and digital texts are socially constructed components to our daily lives. Lynch, 2009, says, in understanding literacy as a social practice, the focus has shifted from viewing language and literacy as a set of rules to using literacy in authentic events, p.192. Either type of literacy can be used by an individual, but it is often the use of that literacy within that individual's life that makes it a social event. In short, literary events, both print and digital, are often social events that construct themselves by the participants involved. Gonsalves, 2008, defends such a thought by saying, the socialization process is a means through which children acquire the language norms, values, beliefs, of their culture, p.3. The ways in which we use both print and digital texts in our lives to share, express, learn, defines the very social nature of literacy itself. D'Agostino and Caravaggio, 1994, explain that as children acquire literacy skills, printed or digital, they begin to use them in a variety of ways. These ways of using literacy are found to be similar to the structuralist model of literacy, which highlights five spheres of literacy that interrelate both print and digital texts to the social environment of its users. These five spheres are, functional literacy, specialized literacy, multicultural literacy, critical literacy, and composite literacy. Each of the spheres of literacy represents a set of skills, attitudes, and proficiencies that are needed to function in a particular context, sphere, or environment that makes particular demands, p.3. These domains find commonality in the idea that, words, symbols, images and artifacts have meaning that are specific to particular semiotic domains and particular, contexts, g. 2007, p.25. It is here in these contexts that lines of literacy blur with socio-cultural components as agents of power. For example, it is often in the first of these environments, 
the sphere of functional literacy, where we find a restrictive view of literacy at work. It is an environment where students are expected to acquire specific technical, almost mechanical skills related to reading, writing, and speaking as measured most often by current standardized reading tests, D'Agostino and Carafayo, 1994, P.4. In the future, the technical literacy skills required for students to be competent and digitally literate might be very different. Students might be expected to navigate a three-dimensional space while narrating digital self-created stories, or ask to create a digital diramana about the last chapter they read with their augmented reality headsets. The skills needed to be literate in 2019 are deeply rooted in the socio-cultural aspects of society and are certainly considered places of controversy within the field of literacy studies, Bottomo, Lamb, and Lee, 2003. Educators play a large role in creating literary expectations and change because they are the primary representatives of the educational system. Meyer and Whitmore, 2010, discuss what it means to reclaim the joy in the literary spaces of learning where students and teachers need it most, the classroom. Perhaps the most egregious insult to reading teachers and learners in the current legislative and policy climate is the marginalization of the rich socio-cultural capital within the communities that schools serve. P.287 The field of literacy is a socially constructed place that intertwines with the good, the bad, and the ugly of any community. Thus. It is fair to say that the field of literacy is a socially mediated place where both print and digital texts serve as regular modes of communication and learning. Meyer and Whitmore, 2010, explains, We argue in this chapter that joy is not a simple feeling of euphoria or pleasure, it is also found in moments of intensity when dealing with something powerful and important. P.280 Print literacy has offered itself a great stage for students to express themselves through different forms and genres of print composition like narratives, poetry, journaling, reflections, and so on. The narratives and counter-narratives of students today may not necessarily be found on classroom walls, household refrigerator doors, or crumpled up under a desk, but in the virtual spaces where students feel safe to let their voices be heard. Such are the places like blogs, Twitter feeds, Snapchat stories, Instagram posts, Facebook threads, and other media that students interact with on a daily basis. The Evolving Nature of Print and Digital Texts Print literacy has played an extremely important role in helping humans understand how to read and write in the world. As Burke, 2001, describes it. The technology of the written word has been around for roughly 5,000 years. He makes the case that the invention of the alphabet up to 45,000 years ago has pushed the boundaries of human consciousness to our current status today. He also describes how the last 3,000 years have changed the way humans read and write. Landoff, 1992 describes technologies like the Gutenberg printing press that changed the way print literacy could be accessed by the masses. Since then, many schooling systems slowly adapted such technology and began to rely on print literacy to disseminate their often didactic curricula. Print literacy itself can be championed with bringing literacy to where it is now. Picking up in the 1980s, media-based texts began offering new ways in which students could generate meaning through texts. Technology has continually given students new ways to access inquiries and communicate with the world. The evolution from print literacy to media-based literacies has changed the way educators and students think about writing as an act of composition. The number of hours spent using paper and pencil in the classroom are beginning to decrease, but what is taking its place? Portable electronics like tablets, laptops, smartphones, and various other gadgetry are occupying the reading and writing spaces in and out of the classroom. For many students in the United States, their digitally literate lives require them to type, print, click, 
search, scroll, track, etc. on a daily basis. Media-based texts are shaping the way students compose their ideas in the real world and in the classroom, Burke 2001. Print and digital texts as technological tools. Print and digital texts are similar in that they are both technological tools. On 1986, discusses how writing is a technology, and that it restructures thought for those who construct it, and those who read it. He expresses his belief that writing is a technology that separates the knower from the known. He uses an example from Plato's condemnation of writing in the Phaedrus and Seventh Letter to explain so how the story. uprising of certain technologies, like written text, were believed to regress one's ability to internally retain their own thoughts. Instead of keeping their thoughts inside their head, they would share them, not orally, but in written form through text, and then eventually lose them. This is in part true now today. If a person only shares their ideas and language orally, meaning can be lost from one generation to the next. You can see this happening in the act of writing various. using printed text contains a sense of permanence on the writer's behalf because the ideas and language accessed by others later in time, even if Noon hears or reads it during one's lifetime. Nearly 3,000 years ago, Socrates described writing as inhuman in its manner of pretending to establish outside the mind what in reality can only be known in the mind. Ong, 1986, explains this inhuman way of thinking in relation to numerical literacy with the rise in the use of pocket calculators in the 1980s. Then, parents feared their children would not develop the internal structures necessary to support the advancement of their mathematical ability because their pocket calculators were providing them with an external resource for conceptualizing simple math operations, such as multiplication. The same argument can be made with word processing programs like Microsoft Word and Pages that auto-correct spelling mistakes for students who have not yet internalized their ability to spell words correctly in the first place. The same can be said for smartphone apps with auto-correct features for writing. Are some of the world's digital texts hindering the development of traditional reading and writing skills? Is it? Printed literacy or that in which has been made to be read in a traditional format amazing? like a book, journal, clay tablet, scroll, etc., have now provided students with text, new and old, that has two-handedly changed the way students learn to read and write in school. Traditional printed literacy affords a higher degree of permanence over digital texts, as is it remains, physically, in this world whereas digital texts require another step into the virtual realm to access them. It should also be noted that traditional print-based literacies do not require electricity or the internet to operate. This is why traditional print-based texts might always be the most accepted form of literacy for learning, as it is the easiest to access in a wide variety of socio-cultural contexts. Multimodalities of Print and Digital Texts the multimodalities found in print and digital texts express an evolving relationship between both discussed forms of literacy. Mahiri, 2006, oh, wow. explains, traditional conceptions of print-based literacy do not apprehend the richness and complexity of actual literacy practices in people's lives enabled by new technologies that both magnify and simplify access to and creation of digital texts. P.61 students, especially the millennial generation, make meaning of the world in multimodal ways. Different types of digital texts that students commonly encounter in their educational environments in print form are picture books, information books, right. newspapers, and magazines. No. It is not just the millennial generation who interacts with one another this Coding. way, older generations have adapted these skills needed to function in the yeah. concurrent literary world. Just even work you gotta learn the millennial adapt. generation was born with media-based literacies like the internet, computer right. programs, we and video game consoles. This has indeed shaped the it's way people read and write in and out of school. However, 
chances are high that the richness of new technologically driven literacies are not experienced in the classroom. G. 2007, says, there really is no such thing as learning in general. We always learn something. And that something is always connected, in some ways, to some semiotic domain or other, p.23. Every digital game-based learning environment is a different semiotic domain, and it requires its user to not only intake information through multimodal ways, but also output such information back into the semiotic domain as a producer or writer. Pulling from Rosenblatt, 1988, it is the transaction of thought between the reader and writer that fosters such meaning-making found when exploring digital environments. Approaching digitized environments with a purpose relates to what Dewey, 1938, believed to be a crucial component to learning in any context. <clears throat> to learn in any DGBL environment is to first acquire an experience, an understanding, or a simple awareness of the semiotic domain itself. To learn using a multimodal text means operating as an active agent in the semiotic domain. G. 2007 explains that both digital texts and print literacy can be viewed as multimodal, meaning texts can be mixed with words, sounds, movement, and bodily sensations that make reading and writing come to life. G. 2007, says. Once we see this multiplicity of literacy, we realize that when we think about reading and writing, we must think beyond print. We reading and writing in a domain, whether it is law, rap songs, oh, academic yeah. essays, superhero comics, or whatever, are not just ways of decoding print, they are also caught up with ways of doing things, thinking about things, valuing things, and interacting with other people, that is, they are caught up with different sorts of social practices, p.18. A common place to share print texts with students is the classroom or any real space where students and educators can meet to share ideas about literary pieces of text. A common place for digital texts may very well be the classroom, but the classroom, or learning space, is now virtual, which allows students to immerse themselves somewhere else related to the digital text environment. Examples of this can be seen with students in a classroom reading a piece of text as they are taken on a virtual field trip via the computer, or with a virtual reality headset using augmented reality. This example should help paint the picture of how digital texts in virtual spaces detached from the physical space, engage students in literary practices that cannot be entirely experienced by print literacy. Even though digital and print-based texts are multimodal, they are different in the ways they are acted upon by readers and writers. Palfrey and Gasser, 2008, argue that digital natives see and navigate through the world differently than those who do not develop the skills needed for digital texts. Popularity of print and digital texts Nearly all of today's readers and writers will face both print literacy and digital texts in their education and especially in their social lives outside school. For educators, the most accessible form of literacy is printed literacy. However, educators are using more and more digital texts in schools, and it is changing the way students make meaning with their curricula. D'Agostino and Caravaggio, 1994 explain how, the expectations and goals of literacy education must change as society changes and makes new demands on its citizens, p.2. As society changes what it means to be literate, so too should education, and that change has been slowly lagging behind since the 1980s with the rise in media-based technologies that would soon become synonymous with the millennial generation like the internet and console-based video games. As the scene of literacy continues to change, here are some questions for us to consider consider. What are the needs of the readers and writers at the present moment, and what might they need in the future? How much print and digital texts do they need? 
What are the trends with print and digital texts and how do they compare and contrast with one another? How do these media-based spaces influence and change the way students read and write? The popularity and demographics of both print and digital texts are interesting aspects of study for this review as they illustrate talking points that can help educators create a literary environment that lends itself to the now of literacy while tastefully infusing the literacy of yesterday print literacy. When it comes to digital texts, the world of video games is a great place to start looking into the demographics of digital readers and writers today. According to the Education Software Association's 2018 annual report, 60% of Americans play video games daily. The average age of a gamer is 34, and 61% are male. The report also concluded that 67% of parents play video games with their child at least once weekly. It it's also good. explains how 56% of the most frequent gamers play multiplayer games, games at least once a week, spending an average of 7 hours playing with others online and 7 hours playing with others in person. These data highlight the importance of understanding digital spaces as places of situated meaning making, and that within these spaces, students are learning how to read and write like never before. The world of the Internet, a place accessible by computer, tablet, smartphone, or any other web-based device, is another great place resource to study the habits of the digitally literate. According to Lenhart, Purcell, Smith, and Zicker, 2010, the use of internet-based features being utilized by media-based technology has increased in recent years, especially amongst children and adolescents. Three quarters, 75 percent, of teens and 93 percent of adults ages 18 to 29 now have a cell phone. In the past five years, cell phone ownership has become mainstream among even the youngest teens. Okay, let's Fully 58% of 12-year-olds now own a cell phone, P.4. Furthermore, nearly two-thirds of teen internet users, 63%, go online every day, 36% of teens go online several times a day and 27% go online about once a day. Also noted in the report, why teens were also slightly more likely to go online frequently, several times a day, compared with Hispanic teens, who are more likely to report going online once a day, P.7. These numbers help practitioners and researchers better position themselves and their practices within the current state of literacy. In 2012, the Pew Internet Group conducted a survey and found that, the volume of teen texting has risen from 50 texts a day in 2009, to 60 texts a day in 2012, for the median teen texter, P.31. The amount of digital texts that students are consuming each day is a highlighted concern because research appears to reveal very little about the long-term effects of these trends. In addition, data is suggesting that more attention needs to be given to the exposure to such digital texts found on the internet like wow, blogs, wikis, social media, and video games just to name a few, Benko, Guys, Earl, and Gill, 2016. More than social media, using Twitter with preservice teachers as a means of reflection and engagement in communities of practice Banco, Guys, Earl, and Gill, 2016. The facts are there, digital texts are growing and K-12 learners are using it more and more, but how does that compare with print literacy in the United States? The scene of print literacy in education remains strong in the United States. In 2014, the Pew Internet Group conducted a survey with 6,224 students, age 16 and older, and found, as a group, younger Americans under age 30 are more likely than those 30 and older to report reading a book, in any format, at least weekly, 67% vs 58%. In 2016, 
the Pew Internet Group claimed that printed literacy still remained the foundation for America's reading habits, but they suggested in time that the popularity of ebooks and other digital texts may trump print literacy. However, there are large publishing corporations involved in education and publication that impact the staying power of print based texts. For many college students, buying textbooks is a routine aspect of school, but the internet makes it easier to get digital copies of texts, which has reduced the overall price of college texts. It is unclear whether shifts in classroom literature, packaged and sold by big businesses, will continue to be disseminated in the form of printed literacy in the future, but Clive Matthews, 2015, explains. The textbook has been a staple of education since the dawn of the age of writing. Designed as overviews of knowledge and introductions to fields of study, textbooks were intended to give a base level of knowledge in a subject for students and teachers who lack access to libraries, expert instructors, or time to browse. One of the earliest known examples, a medical textbook known as the Edwin Smith Papyrus, dates back to as early as 3000 B.C. P.1. Will the day come when printed texts are seen as a second-hand literacy among classrooms in the United States, or will they maintain their place in the classroom for years to come? Skills for exploring print literacy The skills required to be literate using print and digital texts are both similar and different. The wide variety of uses involving both print and digital texts warrant the need to examine the required skills students need in and outside of school to function in the world. These skills, and their accompanying tools, will help students better navigate printed texts, while also interacting with the ever-evolving field of new literacies. The process of learning how to read and write printed texts begins during early childhood. Mon. 2012, discusses Vygotsky's often misrepresented conceptual paradigm of the meaning-making process involved in acquiring language. Vygotsky, 1987, expressed in, Thinking and Speech, that the speaking-slash-thinking system required to make meaning in the world relies heavily on the socio-cultural contexts and constructs in which language learning is occurring. As these social constructs become increasingly digital, it has become difficult to understand how or what specifically is influencing the way students learn to make sense of the world. Learning language does not prescriptively operate in the minds of the learner. It is through this connection between human thought and our environmental experiences that we make meaning of the world around us through language, Vygotsky, 1987. It starts with the skill of being aware of one's surroundings. From there, it grows from a child's inner thoughts, self-talk, utterances, and oral talk. From there, children learn to decipher and decode symbols for meaning using their prior knowledge to build connections of meaning in the brain. Tankersley, 2003, explains how little by little they begin to understand that there is a separate written symbol that corresponds to each sound in our language. Then they learn that these sounds can form words and that words can be put into sentences for other to share. P.166 As children progress with their exposure to printed texts, they recognize and decode simple words and sentences. Children will practice what they hear and fill in the gap with generative meaning making. Children will practice retaining what they read, see, hear, and make up themselves as they reinforce their modes of thinking and functioning in the world using print literacy. Children must be able to relate their inner thoughts into writing through simple sentences and ideas as they progress through early grade levels. It is the goal that students become fluent in their ability to express themselves through writing that pushes the process of learning to read and write in a natural manner inspired by inquiry and experience. By middle school, students are expected to start creating strong connections between content, background knowledge, and new learning, Zig, Myers, and Belcher, 2016. 
they are now expected to summarize, discuss, synthesize, evaluate, analyze, and interpret literature and informative texts. The list of skills needed to be a reader and writer in the classroom is extensive. The Common Core State Standards CCSS, address many of these skills in their K-12 reading and writing standards. It has not been recognized until recently that skills like digital publishing and analyzations of different digital texts are to be expected to be featured in the common classroom. However, there are many digitally literate skills that are still not included CCSS. In 2015, the International Society for Technology in Education revisited their learning standards with the hopes of filling gaps where politically driven standards, like CCS seem to fall short, Lynch, 2017. The widespread use of technology has spawned the need to identify what students are doing cognitively when they participate with digital texts, Lynch, 2015. The use of such skills may not be explicitly known by users of digital media, but it is certainly attracting more attention from researchers and educators in the field. Those who read and write with media-based texts will interact with that text in very different ways than users who are accustomed to using print-based texts, Rust, 2017. Granger, 2010 provides some of the key differences in the way readers must address print and digital texts. He highlights the following key skills as modes of thinking for approaching print and digital texts. First, printed words tell readers and digital texts show readers. Second, some digital texts require the use of kinesthetic and listening activities. Third, Interpersonal meaning from digital texts is developed by the positionality of the reader instead of printed text itself. Fourth, digital texts can replace verbal imagery with visual imagery and motion. Last, readers of digital texts will often navigate in nonlinear fashions while reading, versus the often linear process of reading traditional texts. Skills for exploring digital texts. It can be noted that the skills needed to read print-based texts can be used with digital texts. Yeah, we got to work Lem together. ETAL, 2004, to defends this unison. notion by explaining that identifying important problems, locating information, analyzing usefulness, synthesizing information, and communicating these things to others are some of the skills that students need. Many of the skills used to navigate digital texts derive from the medium of the technology itself, Mills, 2010. Although all digital texts contain their own semiotic domains and ways of being in their environment, it is important to factor in what participants do as they interact with that world, G, 2007. The acts of being in that world instigate the nature of what it means to navigate through the world making meaning and creating connections that change the way its users think. Such is the task of understanding how digital texts can be taught in ways that are similar to how printed literacy has been disseminated for years. Even video games can be considered literature, but it would not be appropriate to say that a video game has been read, but rather, experienced and played. When students mediate meaning of the digital narrative in a digital, game-based environment, they are practicing what it means to read and write with digital texts. This perspective is based on the construction of knowledge through experience I as an acquired skill done. set that some children have and others do not. Wow. The authors of this chapter believe an expectation of all educators is to prepare all students with the skills necessary to be literate members of society. And this might mean that educators need to modify their methods in how they reach yeah, students using print and digital texts across like disciplines or, in all you know, grade levels. Would just look at the data and say, well, the millennials like who now fill the school systems grew up when digital texts were rising in popularity and capability. It was also the millennial generation who grew up in a position to start making sense of the world alongside the explosion of technology that was occurring at the same time. Millennials grew up acquiring the necessary reading and writing skills for digital texts without any real strategy or research-based instruction. 
Some of the skills they learned included mediating three-dimensional spaces in video games, using software, replying to a social media applications, or even just browsing the internet to name a few skills that are different than the traditional print-based reading and writing skills students needed to know just a decade ago. According to Palfrey and Gasser, 2008, the very nature of how millennials use literacy in the 21st century is a clear example of how their yeah, children like will grow up in an environment where exactly. virtual communications and digital change. texts are used regularly, and will most likely have an effect on the child's meaning-making process. For educators who grew up using digital texts, there seems to be less a struggle when it comes to sympathizing with students about their literary needs. It would be foolish to think that printed texts by themselves are responsible for the progression of a student's ability to read and write in the world. It is safe to say the process of learning how to read and write digital texts also begins during early childhood. One study on reading skills and comprehension with young children in the United Kingdom stated, Not all forms of print exposure are equally associated with reading skill, it would be interesting to examine the skills that are being developed by different texts, as students' reading habits reflected a shift towards more time spent engaging in digital texts than more traditional texts, McJown, Duncan, Griffiths, and Stothard, 2015, p. 565. It would make sense that students simultaneously get exposed to and are influenced by digital texts while they learn how to read and write using printed texts. It must be said that students who are exposed to digital texts and printed texts at an early age may be more likely to be better prepared to make meaning and communicate in the world. Here are some questions to think about as the chapter continues. With technological media and device exposure at an all-time high in the United States, how has the environment children make meaning in change? How has this new environment changed the way a child makes meaning? How do students make meaning with digital texts? How do we know if a student is media literate enough in third grade for example? Experiencing print and digital texts through immersion. As the field of literacy continues to evolve, it is important to think about how students experience both print and digital texts in their daily lives outside of school and what that means for their learning inside school. Theorist Louise Rosenblatt, 1988, believed there was much to learn about the way readers experience a text. In the digital age, this belief appears to still hold relevance. Educators seek to better understand how adolescent readers experience digital narratives and mixed reality experiences in the classroom. For current researchers interested in understanding how students immerse themselves with literature using digital texts, the relationship between the reader, the text, and the meaning elicits further exploration such as those found in video games and mixed reality applications. Educators should help forge student relationships with the literacies they use in and out of the classroom. Whether an educator chooses to use primarily print-based texts, mostly digital texts, or a healthy mixture of the two, they will still have to be cognizant of the literary interactions that occur when their students That's use right. them. It doesn't matter what you use, digital so texts be aware like video games and mixed reality applications can provide researchers with a unique window into how students immerse themselves in digital narratives and virtual spaces. For example, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's beloved Sherlock Holmes has been rendered into video games over the years since 2002 with the latest being created in 2016 with episodic mysteries to play and solve, see figure 1. Students are now capable of acting as Sherlock Holmes instead of hearing the adventure from Dr. Watson's account. This gives students an immersive experience into the detective experiences of Sherlock Holmes, his mysteries, ways of being, and greatest of all, a sense of empathy then can be unmatched with traditional print-based approaches to literature study. Mobile-based games like Clash Royale, Clash of Clans, and Minecraft, Pocket Edition, 
are considered current education friendly favorites within the scene of mobile based gamers today. These games have come a long way since mobile games began to appear on phones in the late 1990s. Chilling, 2011, reminds us it was Tetris that first appeared as a mobile game in 1994 on the Haganook MT2000. Soon after, Snake appeared on Nokia 6110 in 1997. Since Snake, mobile-based games have evolved in their complexity into games like Clash Royale, which came out in 2016, and expects its players to understand the use of 93 different characters' attributes and limitations during gameplay, whereas Nokia Snake required its users to learn one character's attributes and limitations during gameplay, see figure 2. For example, millennials who grew playing mobile games first evolved from basic mobile gaming literacy to advanced gaming literacy where players have to account for more than simple moving images and interactions to complex symbolic interpretations, and quick, in-game decisions. The latest virtual reality and augmented reality devices have proven themselves to be major players in the repertoire of innovative literacies available for it. teachers. These devices provide teachers and students with the opportunity to approach a wide range of curricular experiences from different perspectives. New technologies like the Microsoft HoloLens 2, set to come out in 2019, will provide innovative spaces and experiences for students to learn. Researchers can use this new technology to learn more about how students interact within mixed reality contexts. The Oculus Quest Virtual Reality Headset, released in 2019, provides its users with thousands of applications and resources for players to play, research, experience, and collaborate. For example, Roomii, a collaborative application for virtual reality devices allows users to meet in virtual environments that foster collaboration without a classroom, see figure 3. These devices, used as learning tools, are capable of propelling teachers and students' understanding of digital texts and storytelling into new realms, Anderson and John, 2018. Brown, 2008, says. If video games, like literature would transform consciousness and enthrall both critical and popular audiences, its creators must be artists as well as artisans, trained in the craft of writing, as well as the use of the complex tools necessary to tell stories in this new medium, p.19. Players get the chance to become a character in the video game, and this new stance of what it means to play and read may change what it means to empathize within narrative spaces right. and texts. Researchers like Murray, 1997, believed that video games could serve a greater role in developing interactive narratives, and indeed they have over the years with video games like Mass Effect series, Nier, Automata, and Detroit Become Human, see figure 4. Personal computer gaming, or better known as, PC gaming, has taken rise and is currently favored among many experienced and not so experienced gamers around the world, Harvey, 2018. Using computing power via laptop, tablet, or desktop computer, players can access digital games like Dauntless, Fortnite, Minecraft, and thousands more, see figure 5. With the recent rise in Chromebook usage in school classrooms, Schaffhauser, 2015, educators are interested in how they can leverage web-based games and software to build digital reading and writing skills for the 21st century student. Figure 5. A group of students attacking a behemoth in Dauntless on classroom computers. Trends in new literacies in the classroom. In recent years, there has been a refreshing amount of research on new literacies in the classroom. The authors of this chapter have seen the changes firsthand as public educators, and now as pre-service educators, who hear and see the changes when we visit classrooms. 
Technology has crept its way into the classroom and educators at all levels are beginning to take a closer look at how digital texts might play a larger role in their curricular goals. As the evolution of literacy continues to provide new learning affordances for classrooms, educators must attempt to stay up to date on the latest modalities for reaching their students. For example, the rising popularity of virtual reality and augmented reality devices has led to an increase in their understanding and use in schools and other fields as tools for experiencing, creating, and collaborating on content in new ways. Educators must understand the importance of using the latest technologies or they will eventually be doing their students a disservice by not preparing them with contemporary, multimodal resources. Educators must seek to understand and implement the literacies they grew up learning alongside, the literacies they use as adults, and the future literacies their students will use as trends in technology continue to evolve in the classroom. The transactional relationship between digital texts and print literacy may shed light on the evolving nature of literacy studies. Human activities and relationships are seen as transactions in which the individual, and the social, cultural, and natural elements interfuse. Although both literacies share many theoretical commonalities, the field of literacy studies seems to be scaffolding itself for more complexity as technological advances push the boundaries of what it means to be literate in the 21st century. The interactivity of new media-based literacies may challenge the meaning of what it means to empathize with digital spaces and characters with the advent of user-friendly, high-quality virtual reality capabilities. DGVL has been explored recently as a powerful avenue for employing conventions of literacy learning as digital play. Conclusion At a time when literary platforms are shifting in education, it is important to recognize similarities and differences between print and digital texts. If the aim of educators is to make their students more literate, in any discipline, the literature found in this review recommends they incorporate a mix of both print and digital texts into their curricula. Right. Educators are also recommended to take an inventory of the literacies their students use or do not use in and out of school. The literature suggests that giving students the opportunity to use both print and digital texts in school will better prepare them to make meaning in the future as society becomes more digitized. The skills required to be literate in the 21st century have grown and it demands that educators adopt a wider scope of what it means to use digital texts for learning. Much of the literature found in this review discusses the ideological concepts of literacy in relation to education, however, more research is needed from classroom practitioners to fill gaps surrounding the field. What does good literacy learning look like across disciplines in the K-12 classroom? What can we learn about the evolution of literacy and learning by using both print and digital texts with students? These are questions for educational researchers and classroom practitioners. The field needs detailed, qualitative examples of students' interactions with both print and digital texts in a variety of disciplines in K-12 classrooms to better understand what skills and literacies are needed to best serve their needs. Discussion Questions How has our notion of what it means to read and write changed over the last 30 years? How can we leverage new literacies for new results in education? How can pedagogical strategies keep up with new literacies and literary affordances? How does an educator know when to use print-based literacies instead of digital texts? What is the right amount of print and digital texts needed to best educate students in the 21st century? Should educators focus their attention to digital texts over literacies like printed magazines, hardback books, and foldable maps? I don't know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that article. I know there's a lot there, 27 pages over an hour's worth of audio, but um, I hope this video and I hope that this article kind of tie together. It makes you think about 
what it means to navigate literacy, what it means to comprehend, what it means to create it, what it means to use it. And as we continue to develop new literacies and use them in new ways, we have to think of new ways to teach, new ways to disseminate this type of literacy so it's modeled in an appropriate way so that we can use it to progress the way we learn not regress the way we think, not to make us more lazy, but to enhance the way we learn, to give us more opportunity to experience things in new ways so that we can see new pathways to different solutions to tough problems. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Take care.